was just uh, 16 years old when the Iron Curtain fall fell, so I don't have a lot of memories. But uh, the first thing that came to my mind was in church. My my grandma took us to, to, to Sunday school, so we had religious education in the church. But um, it was not really widespread, so my parents told me that, well, you don't exactly have to lie about Sunday school, but please don't advertise that you go to Sunday school because, well, nobody needs to know. And as a kid in the 80s, I didn't really understand why it's a secrecy. But there was not no harsh punishment in the 80s for, for this. It was allowed to go on, on openly and freely. And uh, we had a priest who actually was in prison in the 50s. So we really knew how hard the system could be on, on priests and on, on people who object. But he was also a very brave person. So he, he had a very large class of Sunday school all the time you know, for all the age, age groups. And uh, I remember during Mass at one time, he was preaching about uh, how God was or how Jesus was the savior of, uh, of us. And, um, and then he looked around the crowd and said, and yes, you in this uh, letter jacket, you, you person who is taking notes behind that column, take note, it was Jesus who saved the world and not the party. And at the time I was like 10 and I was laughing at <laughs> what a funny face this is, but it was that serious. So there was a, there was a party delegate taking notes every mess what he was saying and he was kind of openly defying them and the 80s it was not so dangerous but previously it was um, and another thing that came to my mind is a joke at, at the time since I was a dictatorship it's, it's more from the 50s and the dictatorship was a lot tougher at the time it was you know could not openly speak about things for example you could not openly criticize the leader and you could not uh, say bad things about the party even if you wanted to and you couldn't trust anyone in your in your surroundings anyone could have been a spy so people developed this technique of jokes to talk to vent out things and to talk um, bad things about the party and these jokes were harmless on the surface but everybody knew what they meant so for example there is this joke that uh, the guy goes to the name changing office and he says hey I want to change my name Okay, and the clerk asks, so what's your current name? My current name is uh, Stupid Matthew, or Matthew the Stupid in, in, in English order. Oh, okay, and I understand why you want to change names, so I don't put anything into the reason field here. So what do you want to change your name to? Uh, James Stupid, please. And so for, for us, it, it, it just means that this guy is stupid, but uh, not just in name. But uh, for those people, it actually meant something because the dictator was called Matthew Rakoshi. And so this joke said that that guy hates this Matthew Rakoshi so much that he rather remains stupid in name than to bear the name of the dictator. And you could tell this joke to anyone on the street because you were not talking about the dictator. You were just, you know, telling a, a harmless joke about a stupid guy, but everybody knew who it was about and what it really meant. So you needed this, um, this double talk all the time.